Welcome to the first episode of the Back Map Podcast. Uh, today, we are starting this off for the first time ever. We're going to see how many times I mess this up and how many times we mess up things in general. So forgive us. Uh, just because we are professional idiots doesn't mean we are professionals. Uh, I have with me Kita Azami, the one and only Spirals J, and then me, some random idiot you see online, aka Country. Um, <laughs> how you doing? How you doing, Spirals? Hello. <clears throat> I'm alright. Alright, good. And All Kito, right. yeah, <laughs> just jump right in. <laughs> I am good, and don't let anybody else think I am not good. I'm doing fine today. I slept well, yeah. and uh, I'm ready for this first episode. I'm pretty excited. Mm -hmm. so, so, should we just get into it? Yeah, I don't think I think nobody knows us, so we don't need an introduction. But I think it's safe to say a majority of people know who you are. Um, current record holder of 60 standing records. And I think it's safe to say probably one of the most influential players that has existed, in my opinion. One of the best players in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. What do you, you think about? Do you have like a any a little introduction of yourself you want to do? Or did we do it right? I'd say what you guys have is pretty fun. I don't know. It's uh, I feel like it's a lot over the past like four and five years. Um. Uh, especially, I don't know, probably around 2018, 2019, when the game was being updated a little more uh, consistently, uh, mm -hmm. and you were switching guns a lot more back in the day. I feel like the um, the content back then that I'm probably most known for uh, it's a lot a lot more broad than what it is nowadays, or over the last like you know maybe two years, where it's kind of just been the same few guns, same few maps. Yeah, stuff kind of falls into a rhythm recently. Generally speaking, though, I feel like the thing I'm most known for still is the SVDS. Which I don't use yeah. at all anymore, but <laughs> you wanna tell us a little bit about how it felt back then compared to what it feels today? I think the simplest part of it was the uh the old hitboxes if you're able to like beam up an image of this uh whenever this is turned into a video. Uh headshot hitboxes used to be over the shoulders, so sniping was just easier. Like simple that, as. Good grief. So it was like the same width as the as the torso you you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's really, really big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone was just a giant square on legs back in the day. Um, Dude, that would be so fun today. The That'd general be... player had less movement options. Everyone was slower. Guns were, on average, less accurate. So just the overall meta of being like, I don't know, 100 meters away with a gun that can one-shot or two-shot was just super, super strong. Yeah, basically just Are you... get on every day and play a shooting gallery. <laughs> so, like... You're talking about headshot hitboxes um, and the SVDS. Did it use to like be a torso sniper like it is right now? Or was it like any other sniper? No, like it's only headshot? ever become more of a torso sniper than it was before. I think when they first added it, it was uh, a DMR with five bullets. And it had the shortest one-shot torso that it's ever had. Or maybe even none at all, if I mm. remember correctly. So they've never treated uh, that poor gun well. <laughs> statistically, well... When it was added, no, but because of that, yes, it's just been repeatedly buffed over time, and now it's like one of the best guns in the game. Oh, good. Despite not really being what it used to be anymore. For better or for worse. Mostly better, I'd say. <laughs> uh, let's see, do you want to pick a, a topic, country? Do you want yeah, that, to kind do of, that kind of does help lead into the... Um, so a lot, of the, a lot of people, including me, are not fans of some of the ways they've been doing damage ranges recently, like with the uh, multi-stage damage ranges and sweet spot damage ranges. I do think it is applicable in certain situations, kind of similar to... Like, the Mosin, I think, is in a decent spot right now. Uh, it's kind of got a little bit of justification to using it a little bit more. But... I was wondering what actually what both of you thought about the current them just slapping sweet spots on certain things to try and fix issues. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I have an opinion on the Mosin, but I'm I'm not sure if it's very con like logical or if it's controversial. I feel like the Mosin used to be a very cheap and efficient way to get a uh, gameplay similar to the Scout without having to pay for it or grind for like rank one what is it 160 i think and uh it was a headshot sniper you could just chain shots very very quickly and it had really good handling very low recoil it felt very satisfying to use i think that's pretty much what i'm trying to say yeah but currently with the movement changes that make headshotting like 
a lot harder to do. And uh, almost all the snipers getting torso multipliers slash sweet spots that make it way easier to just tap someone and get them. Um, I feel like it kind of kills the identity of the gun. I'm not sure if you guys feel the same way. I I kind of feel like they've given the Mosin a, it's kind of its own little playing field, and they've kind of made the M1903 take the place of how the Mosin used to be, personally at least. I kind of feel like they just gave it that kind of... They've left the M1903 alone a little bit, and they've made it kind of the speedy, quickscope kind of pseudo-scout with just a bit more damage. Mm. And kind of just made the Mosin the quickscope weapon to go to. Basically, I think... I think the question here is is more like, do you have an opinion on like the way that gun identity is going towards, or do you feel like things are all becoming the same or or something like that? I don't think multi point damage range is a good way to make a gun unique. Uh, one of the main issues that the game faces balance wise that I tend to notice is you'll give something like the m one o seven the multi point damage range, and you know it's cool and all. It has this little sweet spot now and it has its niche to be used. But then the BFG and the Hecate and the NTW were unchanged, so why not just use those when they do what they are supposed to do consistently all the time? Not yeah. here, not there, not this place, not that place. They just do their job. Like, the Mosin's it's... in a cool spot right now, but the Intervention just got buffed. So, like, eight <sighs> snipers just got nullified. Like, the TRG, the R700, the Mosin, the M1903, even the buffed K14. It's all just nullified over a, uh, a 160 stud uh, shot to the torso Intervention. Insane right buff, by the way. Yeah, like, it's got fat, it's got good bolting, good aim speed. It's got a decent reload speed. Pretty much all of that's been buffed from where it was nerfed before uh, to bring the gun back in line with uh, with other buffs. I don't know. We're kind of um, kind of dragon balling the game. It seems like every buff is just chasing another buff to try to reach this new power scale to the point of where uh, we have some SMGs that are three shotting further than assault rifles. Yeah, no do you think we should do something like? start only nerfing weapons to try and like counter that that power creep or like do you think there is a way to c recover from this no no <laughs> yeah I, I'm sorry to doom post Death. but uh it's irrecoverable yeah the game is on a one it's it's uh, gone to it's gone one track too far. destination yeah, well that's that's how they're forcing it in the words of the uh the developers um the challenge for balancing phantom forces is going to be to keep the game as centered around weapon realism is possible so like guns like the ump doing 50 damage is just like a reality for the game and the challenge for the developers is going to be making it fair afterward so all we should ever expect is continual buffs anytime they look at anything it's probably not going to be as good as they expect it to be and it's definitely not going to be as good as the guns they just when you look at like the new hk416 um even what they did to the m60 and the hk21 Guns that you wouldn't even think about being buffed are now critically underpowered when you compare them to guns in their category that were just changed. Like, there's mm. about 20 useless carbines right now because they haven't been buffed. Yeah. Assault rifles got buffed. A bunch of those have 3,000 velocity and the ability to carry 24 damage across the map. And then there are SMGs that are 1,200 RPM, 24 max damage or something with, a, you know, two different custom multipliers. Um, all they can do is buff. I think, because what would be the point of doing everything they just did to just undo all of it patch after patch? And we've yeah. already seen how slowly they update the game. So it's just going to be a brick by brick unbuilding of what we have now, which is what we need, but what they'll never do. Yeah, well, and goodness mm. knows if they tried to gut a bunch of things, everybody would be up in arms about that as well. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, they I realize like the... Uh, the feedback they get when they, especially when they nerf popular guns. Yeah. The oh, MG3, God. the MG42, the HK21, the M60... Um, stuff like that. Not the M16, apparently, though, because discrimination on quote-unquote tryhards is common in stylus. So if it's a gun that's known for low-skill players like the AA-12, they'll uh, they'll nerf it and everyone complains. But when it's a gun that didn't need a nerf, like the M16A3, uh, no one's expected to complain, I that's guess. Fair. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. I have one one topic just popped up in, inside my head. I have seen from... I think com commit from the CEO Discord server. He's a uh, manager of the record, the world record sheet. For those who don't know, um, he pulled up a screenshot of you with the record sheet with every single AR records on it. At one point, yeah, when was that? that? Uh, at one point, 
think in 2021, 2022, I was going for every single record for every assault rifle at the point because there really wasn't anybody like grinding the game. Good um, grief. Going for records at the same time that I was. Uh, and then once I did every assault rifle, I went ahead and got only the carbines that you could see from like a 1920 by 1080 monitor looking sheet to make it look like I just had every single record. Um, mm. I'll now post that, that in the group for you guys. The system. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> How, how I almost lost my mind with one record. How in the world do you manage to keep <laughs> keep yourself sane doing all the assault rifles? That's the thing. It's um, I, like I said, I really, I really don't want to be super doom posty about the game. It's like almost like boomer core per se to be like, oh, it was better back in my day. But <laughs> the, the game is the game's rotted to its core now. The developers are saying casual, 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 like they're trying to make the game less competitive. But if you literally look at my YouTube channel two or three years ago, I was playing every map. I was using every gun. I was setting records with secondaries. I was using random melees that provided no advantage, didn't give me an edge because the <laughs> game didn't need that stuff. Mm -hmm. You could just get on and play for fun and get 100 kills or 50 kills or use a pistol and no one would get mad. But nowadays the game is hyper competitive in every single lobby. There's gun metas, there's map metas, you go on warehouse, there's constant wall sprayers, you go on metro, there's back escalator BFG campers. It's set things per maps, like Overwatch. Oh, this is a good Widowmaker map. That's the uh, same thing on yeah, Phantom Forces now. The game is just as meticulously competitive as any slop SBMM AAA game nowadays. There's people that go on containers to strictly blow themselves up with impact grenades or oh use bundle gosh. charges. That's all they do all day. They yeah. use the server browser, not like how the developers think, like, oh, here's a tryhard getting 200 kill games back to back, queuing the same two maps. That's very rare. What's more common is people using, like, the MG3 or, what, like, the NTW doing that prone metro angle where they shoot through, like, four walls. Oh, yeah. boy. And, oh they, and they shoot down a hallway where if you're in that hallway, there's nowhere to go. Yeah. No one ever complains about that, but that's, that's a, an uncounterable action done by a gun well over level 200. That's yeah. just the, the way the game is now. The game is yeah. inherently overly competitive. And For now those... we have one second spawns. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if it's wise to do, but maybe for those who don't know, Country, you should probably put a graphic on, stream, on, on screen for, uh, to show off that angle on Metro with the NTW. Oh, yeah. It's pretty fucking nutty. I think we should the probably not way... show more people how to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said I don't know if it's, it's, if it's wise. The simplest way to represent and visualize the skill gap is the community's depiction of a tryhard nowadays is like one gun, two gun, one gun, two map. That's about it. Desert yeah. Storm main always uses this gun. But a few years ago, you were considered like a jack of all trades. Oh, he's a pro. He can use any gun. Yeah. He can pick up my trash loadout with a you know bad attachment and still get a couple kills. Maybe not drop 100 with it, but like a good player could go queue gun game a few years ago and consistently win because the guns were rounded and somewhat fair. But nowadays, there's so much attachment slop that yeah. you queue into gun game and you get a pistol with a scope that oh, shoots boy. one bullet at a time that deals 20 damage. Dude, it's... getting a scope is rare. Like you The just game get, has like, become a... more confusing somehow with more needless attachments and balance that makes no sense, like tracerless doing nothing, four grips doing nothing, <laughs> yeah. multiple of the sights just having still such high zoom that you can't use them in anything but semi. Yeah. Mm. But the game's more competitive than ever, and everyone's downsizing to like just using a few loadouts, a few sights, a few barrels because they're not changing. Yeah. Well, I mean, when there's one, when there's like one set of attachments that works for seventy-five percent of all the guns, there's no reason for anybody to do anything else other than yeah, that just specific combo. It's like, oh, what do you, what do I, what in the heck do I use in this game? It's just like slap this, this, and this, and you're good. Yeah, it's always the same attachments. Yeah. It, it gets stale really quick in terms of attachments, and when you're trying to do something that's that's a little bit more more funny, more unique. You often get shut down by the people with like the really, really meta loadouts. Yeah, so many people forget you can have fun without having to do the best in the game. <laughs> people equate. It becomes hard fun. in a game like this with uh, the way that the, the quote unquote good guns are now. Um, this feels like an entitled, somewhat scrubby comment. But uh, again, back in my day, the guns that were considered tryhardy was an M16A3 with 40 bullets that did the damage of an SMG at oh, all yeah. time. Just, you I took mean, that yeah. trade off. But nowadays, a tryhard gun is like the Stevens DB one-shotting you across the map. The, or the, the BFG, one gun that's or an NTW. Yeah, the like, one gun that's most effective at all ranges, yeah, any guns situations. Have, like guns in situations that have no counters. 
Yeah. Like someone using something with 1500 RPM. It's just, uh, or the ROM will last patch. The ROM will last patch, three shot kill. That was gross. Do you want to bring up the, the YouTube history topic country? So, oh, yeah. So I think it also does tie into what we were just talking about with it just being purely like you can't hardly have fun anymore. Everything has to be skill or meta based. But, um, we Kita and I have come in on this on like the tail end of I I I'd, I'd say at least kind of the tail end of PF content on YouTube and Twitch but you've kind of been there to see it go kind of see the the joy and the wonder of in the popu- a lot of popularity about PF content kind of go away with a lot of changes and things do you have kind of an opinion on that that either has affected you personally or do you have like a cause you can kind of identify the developers it's the developers faults uh they play their <laughs> game so little and so and know so little of what to do to make an update that all they do now are these big patches and the average if you go look at oscar's channel or strider's channel or some steven's channel anyone who's actually successful unlike me mm-hmm. i just like beat a niche to death practically and it kind of worked because i formed a community around it I'd but say it when you look at the big creators and you see their most popular videos, it's generally not about meta loadouts or high kill games or anything like that. It's the fun side of the game, which the mm. developers don't know how to harness. They don't play their game, so they don't know how to make it more fun. They know mm. how to make the HK416 do one more damage or three shot further or something. Or, you know, they know how to give it a new attachment that's not fun to play against. But they seemingly don't know how to inject fun back into their game. I think it's most obvious with the recent seasonal updates where the developers haven't had someone to um, hold their hands, per se, to kind of make their seasonal events for them. Uh, Our last Christmas event featured maps with visible spawns that were knowingly patched. They didn't use the patched uh, versions of the map. They actually, in fact, used ones that were from a removed member of the community that had uh, done a no-no thing. A YouTube demonetization kind of thing. Oh. Um, Why they did that instead of uh, contacting their extensive team of contributors that work for them entirely for free i don't know um i just think they don't care like Mm. i said they don't care how fun the updates are yeah that Uh, was that was kind of evident with the pdws wasn't it (laughs) god the pdw update no see that's Uh, where you're wrong unfortunately oh really because that's directly the developer's idea fun what i said earlier oh their idea of balancing the game is to keep every number tied to realism, a.k.a. Yeah. I don't know where they're getting all the... I don't know if they're shooting people in real life with these guns and finding out how many bullets <laughs> they, they hit them with before they die, but apparently that just means making all the guns insufferably strong. Um, the maps are too small, the spawns are too short, um, the way the game plays, wall banging deals full damage, uh, there are some guns that can go up you know, five, six walls, and we're not even talking warehouse, like desert walls. Oh, that's yeah. that's interesting. You saying wall banging doing full damage? Do you think that should be changed? Do you think wall banging should take away a part of your damage? I think, I mean, when you're looking at it, the the issue of wall banging, because I I think we've all been killed by somebody shooting through a wall excessively that might or might not have known where you were. I think trying to nerf all of those guns would be. A triathlon compared to the effort it would be to just nerf wall banging damage oh, and probably yeah. scale it per weapon class. Maybe but give some guns like assault rifles normal damage because it's a normal, you're a 30 bullet gun. Maybe, you know, nerf it even further than you would for SMGs because they're small caliber rounds. And then definitely nerf it for LMG solely because, you know, they, they have a lot of bullets. They might be meant for penetrative power like in the real world or something. But if your game's not really fun, then no one's going to play it. Yeah. Like, like, all of yeah. this testing that they're doing obviously requires people, which is why it's going so slow, because the developers are mentally in 2017 where their game still has 10,000 players. They're not getting data back fast enough to find out whether or not making the vector an instant kill across the map is a good idea. <laughs> so They had to get the railgun into the game again somehow. They just had to do it. I don't know. I, I feel like we're at an impasse where they simply need more people on their project to like fix the pipeline. Because updates, even if they are good, are coming out too slowly. And you can just, like, look at the Rolimon charts. Like, see player count charts for PF, where they do one of these updates and, like, a thousand people show up. And then they realize they're playing the same maps, the same guns, against the same corny shit that made them quit three months ago. The same grenade that you can't hear that one-shots you from 38 studs. <laughs> it's... It, I don't know. The, the simple fact of the matter is... is 
you look at the casual player base, the spending player base. Not not us, not any of, the, of, of us three people sitting here. We're talking the people grind. that have actually yeah. spent fifty or a hundred dollars on the game to mm-hmm. buy stuff. Yeah. Not at level two hundred, but like at level fifty. They wanted this or they wanted that. They you know they watch the YouTube video. They want a bunch of attachments. That's a lot of people. Yeah. You look at leaderboards nowadays of current matches where people, you know, from my community, people at my skill level are playing, and they're still dropping those high kill games, but now you're seeing people go actually like 40 and 60, 30 and 50, yeah. 50 and mm. 65. That can't be fun. No. This new game that's been crafted under the goal of a more casual Phantom Forces is now more like sweaty, meticulous, and like overly thought out and competitive than it has ever been. It's, they have removed all the chill from their game. It's benefiting more sweaty players over casuals, is it's what you're It's benefiting to say. mindlessness, which is the worst part. The ah. game used to have an articulate skill ceiling where being good felt graceful. Being good feels brutal now, like you're playing Mortal Kombat and sawing through people. Yeah. You're actually just like <laughs> playing Doom now. There's often too many people to the point of where we're loading like you used to before the one second spawns is now oh, a boy. bad play. You need to play all around positioning or reload speed. Because if you're playing Warehouse, Metro, Fortress, Elevation, the list goes on. Dust Bowl, Dunes, even big maps. If you're using an assault rifle and you kill someone in the open and respawn, that might be it. Mm-hmm. That one second spawn's coming for you. Yeah. Mm. Revenge is even more tangible. Mm. <laughs> All right. I had something I was thinking about uh, even before we started the podcast. I didn't talk about country about it. I don't know why. <gasps> <laughs> um i know a ton of people who see you as a very very good player including myself i think you're incredibly good at this game and i wanted to ask you are there any tips you have for people who are aspiring to become like this like game mechanics that are a bit hidden or just something to practice over the years i formed almost a mini bible in my opinion of like the steps that you would need to take to become a well-rounded player Because competitive had already proven, you know, for what we've had in the past few years of like, you know, C7 only and M16 only Mm alt accounts and tryhards. You really, you can, you know, if you want to get good at the game, you can just one punch man that shit and just play for hundreds of hours doing the same thing. And you'll probably get really good at it. But I feel like, like I said, over the past few years, the, the method I was giving out or at least like offering to people was like, probably get to the point of where you can get records like ceo records even if it's low-hanging fruit and it's like not very high kills if it's a weirder niche gun that's like proving it like your grit or your merit enough to like get on your way to be considered a skilled player if you're able to use guns that no one else does and you know like push boundaries um Mm. overall i don't know be ranked 200 probably get to the point of where you're setting 150s like not casually but like you can get one if you push yourself but with the way the game is now a lot of this has changed um, yeah, 150s are free nowadays. It's, oh yeah, they you know, are. Like Metro and actually kill the, like, the same rank ten the... over and over. Yeah, Did you guys God. see the new highest kill game is 262. Good grief! Um, how many yeah, deaths? Uh, I think it was something in the 20s. I can go find the screenshot. Oh, it's not that bad. That's that... that's pretty good. <laughs> it was on containers with the Saiga. Yeah, oh yeah, the developers have succeeded in making a more casual game. <laughs> yeah, I'm still more casual one for my record. So there it is. Uh... I've I've hit a hundred kill games a few times on stream over the last few days, and I was really proud of myself. I look at my KDR; I died fucking fifty times. It's so that was two sixty two <laughs> and twenty seven, forty five point five thousand XP. And just like I was saying before, there's some people on the enemy team going fifty five and sixty five, forty nine and forty six, thirty and thirty six. 26 and 41 the only other game i have ever seen in my life with leaderboards like that is call of duty on shipment like actual oh, yeah. Grinder, God, yeah. where oh, you yeah. spawn yeah. into usually unavoidable death but, but you like guys shipment. say oh yeah like you're you're agreeing I which like game shipment. has kill streaks <laughs> how are people dying 65 times in a game with no kill streaks <laughs> <laughs> that's true all right country your turn what oh i don't want to oh. <laughs> um Okay. Wow, we've talked about. Am I allowed to bring a little up... bit of everything? Yeah, am I allowed to bring up? Uh, in your opinion, Kita, do you think I'm allowed to bring up the split, like the server split? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, I'm sure you're gonna have a a beautifully <laughs> Very heated voiced opinion. opinion about the casual and adrenaline server situation. Um, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save my opinion at, till afterward. 
So I oh. so I I'm not all that heated about it, but I also feel like people are not going to want to listen to me talk about it to get to him. <laughs> uh I really don't have too much to say in it other than the fact that um it really goes to show how much the developers care about us to be splitting their dwindling dwindling player base into uh two different game modes and neither of them are going to be like before version 9. It's going to be like with this new stamina or the new like all adjusted adjusted slide distance and everything for casual mode. Mm-hmm. So two new game modes and neither of them are original like quote unquote real Phantom Forces. Both of them are these like Mickey Mouse versions the developers are uh convinced are better. Yeah. Do you think that gutting the movement speed in the casual lobby is going to make casual players like have a better advantage like that game mode will be infinitely harder than adrenaline mode in every way, shape, and form. It will be a vicious, torturous, brutal hell on earth. It will be the hardest thing I think anyone on Roblox will have the chance to play in their <laughs> lifetime. It will actually just think about the guns that you don't see right now because you're slow with them. Now think about that oh, going away. Oh my god, yeah. It's just going to be counter blocks V3. think about all of the on-belly gameplay that you're going to see, you're not going to hear them because they weren't moving. Not, you're not, no. And right now we complain about someone running up and killing you and having no footsteps. Soon you'll be complaining about there not being footsteps to be heard. They'll just be hiding. Mm. <laughs> There's going to be people playing this game for two years and never knowing you could sprint. I, like, the M60 got an RPM buff, and it's a three-shot across the map. I don't know. Why would it get an RPM buff? It doesn't need like the that. Like, si- the heat system that it has, Didn't I don't... Didn't they just nerf it? I think they nerfed the range on it recently, but overall, from what it was before all of this, it's buff. I see. Oh. Country, you said you had an opinion about this split server? Yeah, so, it's really, all things considered... It's definitely not going to benefit anything, but I do think with how aggressively people responded to the whole movement change, I I do think it will benefit some people. It'll benefit some people on both camps. Overall, I think it's kind of it's kind of silly, kind of pointless, but I do think there are people who are going to benefit from it on both sides. Like um, new players, the mill gonna, simmers. Yeah. There's going to be people who enjoy <laughs> kind of chilling and playing and they, they won't have, they don't have to worry about complaining about the current state cause they have what they want. Then there's other people who are going to p- get what they want. And then there's going to be the people in the middle who just kind of want the game to go back to normal. But obviously, I mean, that's never going to happen. So in this situation, at least there's some people benefiting from it on both sides where it's not a total loss for like 75% to 90% of the people. I think, I I, think it, could, it could be better, but I do think there's going to be a lot of people who will benefit from it, and there will be some positive stuff to come from it. I think you're right. I think that there is something to be benefited from it, but I think there's also a really big issue with it, and it's the way that it was worded when it was first presented. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, I don't know if you can pull up the screenshot of the image right now, but the way the devs showed it was they called it casual and, like, with under it saying like the more normal Phantom Forces experience and next to it Adrenaline, which is the typical Phantom Forces, the normal Phantom Forces. And they called it like more tryhardy, more sweaty. Mm. Um, I feel that it was just worded very wrong. I feel like they're trying to push people towards their vision of the game, even though it's never been like that, you know? Well, I mean, when the, um, when the devs don't know how to imp slide, then casual probably would be the more usual experience in Phantom I Forces guess. for them. But yeah, I just... My only complaint about it is, like, let them cook. If it's bad, it's bad. And maybe they could have ward, worded it better, you know? Yeah. Well, and at least, I guess, I, with separate servers, they could make they could make changes individually for, like, what we want or what other people want. And I think we could actually potentially lobby it to get what we want in at least one of the servers because i think that would be i think that'd be unlikely because i think they're probably their attention be so split they wouldn't want to work on both at the same time yeah they're having a hard time working on one game right now as it is so imagine two i do think there is if if people really wanted to go for it i do think there's a potential that something could be done with that i just don't think soon I wanted to bring up something because I know you're very, you have a very distinct opinion on this topic, Spirals. 
the hacking situations right now in Final <laughs> Forces, um, we know it's pretty bad. I think yeah. uh, I think everyone knows that you're you're very aware of how bad it is, and you're very vocal about it. Um, but for many people in the community, hackers feel m less as like a game ender, less as like a, something to ruin the experience, as more of a a kind of nuisance. Yeah, like more of something that's annoying. What do you feel about it? The people in charge of the game have not put out the necessary tools to inform players on what a cheater looks like and uh, moderators on how to catch cheaters. And therefore, the average player deserves cheaters and they are too stupid to tell when someone is cheating in their lobby. So do you sucks for them. Do you want to tell people about how to spot a cheater? Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, these guns are so buff, sometimes it's pretty indistinguishable from normal gameplay. It's pretty hard to see. Uh, I mean, overall, you know, for like silent aim, it's still just uh, bullets coming out of the gun the wrong way, like absolute sideways, yeah. uh, or, you know, aiming one way and bullets going the other. Um, but that can also happen with lag. The real point is, is that it does not matter, guys. Uh, yeah. Objectively, looking at Phantom Forces from my perspective, uh, with everything that's happened, uh, the easiest way to describe it is nothing has changed. I can get on the game and have someone teleport to kill me, and then I can join another lobby and have a cheater kill me. So the game has not actually changed. There's yeah. new gun sway and there's damage numbers, um, but all the same shit that's going to make everyone leave is still happening. And they're not going to fix it. They're going to keep slapping new coats of shiny paint on stuff. So what you're saying is the hacker situation is definitely ruining the game for you? Oh, ab I mean, it's ruining the game for everybody and a lot of people that it's being ruined for just don't know it yet. And they're dying to mm. a ton of cheaters while they're trying to figure that out. Yeah. They just don't know yet. Very recently, over the last few days, I've seen a, uh, an, a slight increase in the number of of uh, closet cheaters, rage hackers yeah. are a lot less prevalent right now, but a ton more people I've seen have walls, have soft aim, and everything. Um, I just want to remind everyone that if you're suspicious of a player, there's, especially on the enemy team, it's a lot easier to see when someone on the enemy team is shooting at your teammates through walls. Mm -hmm. um, use the spectate tool, and yep. if you go behind someone, you can press F and lock into them and like see everything they're doing. Um, it's hard to find them on the map sometimes, but if you do suspect them, watch them for a few minutes without telling one in, anyone in chat so they don't have time to disable their hacks. Yep. And uh, just try and watch them. Yeah, free cam is an incredible tool. Um, do, but, uh, not, I... do not call people out in chat. They will toggle <laughs> and you will gain nothing. If you think they're cheating, watch them and record them. And then if you have proof, you can send it to people. But do not go, do not be the level 45 that goes into chat and goes, uh, cheats. Just says cheats. No name, just says <laughs> cheats. Guys, there's someone cheating. And then it defeats the entire purpose of the people trying to watch them who actually know what they're looking for because this person toggled because they saw the word cheats in chat. You're just basically an alarm to say, oh, shoot, the police are coming. Hide in your house. Don't announce it. Silently watch. It's so much easier. <laughs> Also, I've, to another topic, I've seen for the last movement update, 11.0.0, not the the new revision of it, point one, where they, uh, they backtracked on a few really bad changes. I've seen a large portion of the more skilled, older player base say that they would quit. Um, a lot of them being console players. Um, and I've also seen you having a reduction in your content output i'd say especially on twitch do you have any thoughts on people's enjoyment of the game slash the game's maybe player count or content future if you i don't know how to word it exactly do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah uh the game is headed down a dark path yeah um i feel like it's losing players because of um an identity crisis of some kind. Yeah. The definitely. players want something that the devs are not ready to deliver. Mm -hmm. And, um, Oh no, the players want something that the developers don't want. That that's like the simplest fact. Of the yeah. Matter. It's the easiest way to describe it. The more that the developers implement an update that they see as a good idea or their vision. And then the more people come into the test place chat to disagree or to flame the developers, uh, the less they read the chats and they, the less they, they stick read to it. their own ideas. Yeah. yeah. So it's just an infinitely scaling thing. 
And I think as you guys can tell from the recent really creative updates, uh, we're headed on a path where very soon we're going to have no Do you think having like big updates, like uh, I've seen a lot of content on YouTube that I was never part of, mostly the updates that changed player skins. Like yeah. uh, I've seen you play those, on those updates. I've seen uh, your, your record on the HK416, I think on Warehouse. Mm -hmm. where everyone was wearing a big, fat, bright hoodie, and it was really funny. Um, was there a lot of contents in those updates, or was yeah. it more of a reskin Yeah, those, thing? those were a whole, like, uh, themed patches. Like, the update had a name, and it had, like, a reason. They had, like, a seasonal melee. Uh, yeah. That was done Do by someone else, though. Uh, I already said uh, before, uh, all, all their free help has run out, and they don't want any more. So we're never getting updates like that again. That was not the developers. That was someone helping hypothetically if it was to happen do you think the game could have a chance again yes the yeah game, the game definitely needs people who are passionate about it and have been no, the only reason i'm even here it. like like doing this like try like even talking through and entertaining questions about it the game is always like one or two simple steps from being fixed even right mm -hmm. now but um it's about how far away we're pulled away from that from the developers decisions on what they think is best for the game or the community uh, or who they think should be in charge of this or that, whether it be maps or updates or gun balance uh, or anything. Yeah. Um, it seems to basically. Get, yeah, it seems to get rarer know, and rarer where dev teams actually understand like what people want over what they think is best for the over what they think is best for the game. Because I mean, I'm going to take the opinions of a few thousand people loudly voicing their opinions over what i would per if i was in a dev position i would personally not worry as much about what i want if there's thousands of people yelling at you about what that want is i would kind of question what i was doing at that point and it seems mm. to it seems like devs are doing that less and less uh across the board not even just in this situation but it just seems to be like people have just stopped caring and are trying to go for their personal visions and their and it doesn't seem to there's not a lot of instances of it paying off, I'll say. It doesn't, mm. doesn't usually go well. Keep in mind that, I mean, I'm saying that after, what, the game's been out for, what, 10 years now? The beta yeah. came out in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, this game is kind of an indie game, not really anymore. It, it felt very... Um, I think a lot of people liked the, the slightly unfinished polish of it back in 2018 2019 and how um it was more casual you know there was less like hyper optimization of things and keeping in mind that this is a very small team mm -hmm. um they have their own vision of the game and i i don't like bashing them for ruining it but i totally not ruining it for not going in the same direction that the community wants them to go. Yeah. Um, but I totally understand the community's frustration with how everything has changed so far. Um, so what you are saying, Spirals, is basically we need more like passion in the community. We need people to submit more. Or, we had or, passion in the community, and they scared all those people away by not. They listening scared to them, them. Not offering the money. I see. Do you think that there are, do you want to talk about al alternative games maybe, or like more play styles that you think are, are more fun in Phantom Forces to try and revive that passion? No. No? The game's not fun <laughs> to play anymore. <laughs> All right. Uh, are, do we have anything else to talk about? Um. Uh, oh. Okay, so this is very possibly a very ignorant question, and because I just genuinely, I had like I know probably out of the three of us, I know probably the least about like the community's history or anything like that. So um, I pretty much only watch like actual history videos and other random stuff like that. So I don't have any <laughs> basis on this. But I have there have been a couple times where I've been in like a game with you say and you're talking to me i don't know who the heck you are because you're i mean you're on an alt and probably for a good mm. reason so do you so do you personally think you obviously you play a lot i mean the fact that you are almost double my current level on your alt speaks for itself um you play a lot on some of your alts do you think personally that benefits you or makes your experience better or do you think you were just forced into the situation 
because the state of your main. Oh, account. I need it. I need yeah. it. The developers don't offer me any protection. Uh, they made a really weird announcement in Silas about my removal from CC that implied that I did something really wrong or bad. Um, and I started getting like ridiculously targeted as a result. I like my main's like a waste now. I just oh. a lot, like a lot, a lot. Only after what they did though. Okay, I was gonna. I was thinking it was because of your level. I totally didn't even factor that in. So I guess that I make used sense. to regularly stream on accounts that didn't have perms uh, as like a challenge to myself. And I'd make a new alt starting mm -hmm. from level zero. I wouldn't take like the quote unquote like creator package of like you know perms and credits and everything and you know yeah. tag. Um, and I'd stream on those with more viewers than I had after the CC removal uh, when the game was simply more popular. Uh, and people wouldn't join and harass me and be weird. You know, things were all casual. And then yeah. after I got removed from CC and I tried streaming on my main, I got harassed just so much. So many people knew uh, that it just brought so much negative energy towards me. Uh, yeah. And they're all people from Stylus, uh, oddly enough. Like people from the people just from the Stylus community or people from Stylus proper? Like people from the Stylus Discord, not like okay. staff members right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. That makes more sense because, I mean... The Stylus Discord isn't exactly a very super friendly place anymore. Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they don't care about it. Either. Like, that's for some reason the way they want it to be. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't make much sense. They to could me, very, very easily change it. Um, oh, yeah. And they've had uh, like literally like a team, like a squadron of people that are dedicated to keeping that Discord, uh, quote unquote, in order. Um, but they mainly just talk to each other now. You kind of see that. Like when people mm, left their mm. messages. They yeah. talk to each other publicly. They could go do that somewhere else. Yeah. But well, you talk, yeah, they don't. Yeah. You talked about content creator benefits um, on Phantom Forces. It's what it's hard. It's vote kick immunity. It's so vote people kick can't immunity, hard vote kick, kick and you. Kick. You can kick someone out of the game if vote kicks aren't going through or if people like are being really bad. Yeah. And what? What was the other thing, Country? Rank kick. So you can set a minimum rank for your server oh. to kind of like help against uh, spam alt, like alt account cheaters. Yeah, for from rage hackers and stuff. Yeah. Um, the content creator requirements on YouTube are like two thousand subscribers a or thousand. one thousand subscribers, it's and on Twitch it's two thousand followers. Do you think that there's a big disparity in the amount of effort you need to get on either platforms? Like on Twitch compared to YouTube, or do you think it's? I can't really fair? tell. I'm kind of. I kind of got boosted. Like when I first started doing YouTube, uh, I got a lot of shoutouts. Well, not a lot, but like just like a couple shoutouts from Oscar and God status. Oh, just a know. generous, <laughs> a generous helping of shoutouts. Um, but that kind of just switched over to my Twitch when I first started streaming. Like just a lot of people knew that I was going to be. Um, yeah. I I don't know. The requirements are are pretty silly. They've let a lot of uh, absolute garbage creators in the program in the past that had no interest for the game whatsoever that were there strictly for terms. Um, yeah. Pretty interesting. They've let people in that barely even uploaded the game and then proceeded to continually not upload the game, but then provably use their perms more off screen than they would for the actual sake of making content, which is what the perms are for. Yeah. Uh, ergo, why I had them when I was streaming, because I literally needed them at times. Yeah. Um, I, I asked this question mostly because I started streaming Phantom Forces almost daily in April. It's been two months now, and... Um, my main platform is Twitch, and I honestly don't see myself getting content creator role anytime soon. Not that I deserve it, but um, it's been kind of no, hard, hard to on grow a few organically days. making PF content. Yeah, I've, yeah, it's yeah. it's been kind of hard on a few streams because there were streams where I was getting absolutely lobby camped by people making alt accounts and rage hacking alt accounts with my name in them. So like I was getting booted off of servers because people thought yeah. they were my alts. Um, so I, I, I honestly never see myself reaching 2000 followers before like two or three years from now. And I don't see myself playing for this long either. So I was just, I don't know, maybe it's just me trying to complain about the, how hard it is to grow on Twitch versus YouTube. No, you, I am 100% there with you. Cause I am like, I'm in both camps doing YouTube and Twitch right alongside you. And I will say it is trivially easy to get youtube content creator and infinitely harder for twitch like the mm. youtube youtube requirements um youtube requirements took way less time and it's only it's two uploads a month and 300 views a month to maintain it which is that that is 
once again, trivially easy to maintain. Nobody, I mean, we're seeing it. If you go into the content creator chat, not chat, the like the creator content uh, where people post their videos, there's nothing. I mean, it's maybe mm. one person out of all of them every other day. Uh, nobody, nobody has to upload anymore. They just have to sit there and wait for the next update or for the next quote unquote scandal. And then they just get 10, 20, 30,000 views from that. And they don't have to actually care about what's going on or making content anymore. Mm. So, do you have another topic to talk about, country? Um, I'm I'm pretty dry on topics. <laughs> yeah, I I'm mostly dry, but I mean, like you're so. I don't think that question really. I don't think that matters anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that matters much. Do you want to speak about something specifically, Spirals? Yeah, if you've got questions or something really? you want to talk about that's bugging you, go for it. Nah. Eh. Yeah. Not really. That sounds about right. that sounds fair. So right before we end, we're trying to make something that's like a, a make this podcast something that's a little regular. Um do you have a recommendation for someone else to have on the podcast, maybe for next time or something like that? I really hate how sounding so evil, but anyone I could name probably doesn't play the game anymore. I mean, that that, that doesn't matter. I think um, I feel like someone that knows the community or someone that has history with the game. Like someone we could talk about. Congratulations. To. Welcome to the PF Ice Bucket Challenge. <laughs> Sacrifice a name. I Seven. really don't have many. Yeah. I don't. All right. Fair. That's fine. It's probably just going to be me going around asking a select <laughs> Everyone group of 20 can. people like, hey, hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, is that it? I think we can. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it matters how far we go. <laughs> we're just gonna. We're gonna see if this will help do any good. Give people something to listen to. Um, oh, I, what? <laughs> Bro's pulling out the Glock. He's done with us. <laughs> He's done. He's ready, He's ready to out. someone. <laughs> I'm getting out of this one way or another. <laughs> Rib those two pedestrians. <laughs> All right, but well, uh, we are like half a mile into the sky. <laughs> what do you mean, pedestrians? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much for joining us today, Spirals. It was very nice to have you here. Mm -hmm, very much. I fear we may have stirred up, um, stirred up a little bit of resentment inside that mind. <laughs> oh no, I'm just sorry if I was too negative. I just, I like, no, I was gonna, gonna say if I, if I had a message, like any further message to say, I'd probably be making videos or streaming but i just don't that's fair there's yeah. just nothing left to say i have so mm. little faith in yeah, what's no, those to come make, with the uh, game those will make great youtube short titles for some of the things you said though <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be great <laughs> no but really it's conflicting it's... seeing the player count up for the first time ever during an era where i'd consider the game not doing well but i don't know right. how long these people are gonna stay yeah, it's I not think, it's yeah. not an amount of people where I feel like I'm some clown ass hater and the developers stuck it to me and they factored out good players and people that they want to play are actually in. The like percentage is fucking vertically flying downwards. I really don't think people are satisfied. Like no. the average play time's going up, but I, I don't know, man. I really don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh it's turbulent to say the least. Well It I makes hope... me feel like the uh the next year or two is uncertain for the game. We're gonna find I out. I think we we all hope that this game gets better, and if it does, oh, I absolutely. think yeah, it'll knows. it'll That's be so for. much fun. Yeah. Well, I think Spiral's getting a little jittery over there. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he found the nearest um, pane of glass. So yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, you want to do spiral. some final wor words, country? <laughs> help <laughs> <laughs> all right i have no idea you want to do a, an outro and post i mean what, do you have something you want to say like we can we can just do a very not really cut man to us in a completely different situation not really man i don't have any anything else to say i i really want to thank you spirals for being yeah. here you're you're amazing man yeah i didn't expect you to say yes this has been pretty cool yeah, we really didn't expect you to say yes. Yeah, we both laughed at the idea. Then you said yes. I was like, huh, well, that worked. <laughs> All right, well, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, really, thank you. Hopefully this goes somewhere. We can actually help people have somewhere to listen to things or 
try and get the word out about about what you think I just don't know who the developers are willing to listen to anymore, man. Because if we could just leave it up to them, then none of this would be in question. Like I said earlier, it's like the game is always one step or two away from it. Mm. If they could just play the game and do it themselves, we'd be fine. Mm. But somehow we're trying to figure out how to make the fucking perpetual motion flying machine and figure out how we can make the developers who don't play their own game make it more enjoyable. Mm. Yeah, it's like if I was like baking a pie and I was like, "How do I make this taste better?" But I've just never even tried it once. It's not a, not even, mm. not even a little bit of the shit I'm putting in it. <laughs> not even the crust. You give it to other people and you wait for what they say and you do nothing of what they want. <laughs> Tastes a little bitter. All right, cool. I'm not gonna change a fucking thing. <laughs> I'm actually gonna block. It's actually gonna be the last time I listen to what you say. All right. Well, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Um, we'll be back when. What do you want to do that again, Quinty? We'll try a week. We'll try weekly, but we'll see how many. You guys got to. You guys got to get Lido Zinnaman. You guys got to conjure Lido. I know. I am one hundred. Yeah. I had a very good conversation with him during the whole movement tweaks update. I think he would. I think he'd be willing to to humor me on that. We'll see. I'd love to talk with with one of the devs. Mm -hmm. Even maybe more than one. Maybe like. One or two at the same time would be really you great. You can so get can... Axis and Lido if you have some Steven there. You got to get some Steven first. True. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll have to work on right. the chain. They, for some reason, those two grown men will bend themselves into pretzels for what some Steven <laughs> wants. <laughs> what are you eating there? Ice. That's oh, that's straight base. ice. No, I can't even. That is. I can't. That is the meal of my childhood. I can't even blame you. It's thirsty. <laughs> so you're oh yeah, me, you're telling me the Canadian doesn't eat ice. Country. We forgot one question, man. What? Spirals, how does it feel to play Roblox when you're so old? Oh, <laughs> this, um, this question came from someone that you are close to, I will say. <laughs> it's so deep. I get asked that on stream a lot. Like, I've had people come in and go, like, there's no way you still play it's this. Such a, it's such a stupid I, question. It's a good thing to be asked, though, because I, like, you know, I said a lot of negative stuff, but it does give me a brief chance to speak positively. Yeah. I came to the community when I was 15 years old, like first started playing PF when I was 15. I'm almost 25 now. Um, Wait. But the, the whole time, I feel like uh, going through the community and like the different eras, like back when Roblox leaderboards were a thing and I joined a clan because of how much weekly XP that I played for. Mm -hmm. And I, then I, I, I found my way into a clan with like other people that were high level at the time. I was like, oh my God, you're level 150, like crazy stuff. <laughs> then I found my way into competitive. Then I did a year or two with that. Then I found the main style of server after I had already got to know a few people that were in the community from comp. Then I became style of staff and I did that for a couple of years. Then I left the community for a little bit when I resigned from staff and I came back and I was a content creator. I, it's kind of just been beautiful the whole time. I've made it my own thing from the very beginning, like kind of just going with the flow on whatever feels the most fun to do. Mm -hmm. Um, there's really nothing like it. It'd be the same reason that, or like the same answer you'd get if you ask somebody how they've been able to play TF2 for 10 years. Yeah. You know? Because uh, it hasn't yeah. been, it hasn't been the same game to that person for pretty much a single one of those. There's always something new. Yeah. Well, and that is, that's one of the beauty, that's like one of the beauties of Roblox that people always seem to miss. And it's always the people who just play like AAA titles and stuff like that. I mean, people always, they're so critical about, the, what the game you're playing is and not why like a lot of people a lot of people play pf and a lot of those games where people question it because i mean if you grow up or on something or you find something to be like kind of your like your, your game your thing you go back to your little niche you don't have a reason to leave that and then but the people that don't have that connection are always just sitting there going like why, why are you playing a baby game why are you still on roblox why are you still doing this like they don't and then they go and pay seventy dollars for the next two K or NFL game or something like that. To get bent over on an ass game that's not even fun to play. Yeah, Call of Duty still having pre-order bonuses. Seventy five dollars on Call of Duty Modern Warfare two point five, like pre-order. Yeah, <laughs> people the don't. I think Legacy Mastered Vault Edition two point oh. I think the one thing that it. people don't realize is that Roblox is a a game engine more on on the level of like Unity than yep. an actual game. 
Adopt Me ruins the reputation of Roblox for anybody over the age of 14. No, it's just, it's, you don't even name one game, it's just actual Roblox. There's a big yeah. difference between PF and actual Roblox. Oh yeah, huge difference. You can difference. go fucking look at Brookhaven and fucking Royale High and all this shit. The, like, at, like overt pedophilia yeah. on these Roblox social games, and no one doing anything about it, that's real Roblox. Yeah, there's the, there's the little niche of fun and well-made shooters that people just lump in with Roblox and it. It's an unfortunate circumstance. <laughs> have you had? Have you been having fun on BattleBit? I've heard you started playing it a little. <laughs> I've been on BattleBit for a while. Um, not I'm really. Kind of done with BattleBit. Damn. I just like I the mean, rest of the like, community. Not in a bad, not in a bad way. I kind of burnt myself out. I played a little too. I mean, you saw. Hey, the <laughs> we're the same, <laughs> dude. I put three hour, 300 hours in this game in one month and I couldn't Good do grief. it anymore. You did that to yourself then, big man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Alright, well, uh, thank you so much for being here, Spirals. Yeah. Dude, it's, again, we really didn't expect you to be here. Um, hopefully we can get the developers on the show at one point so that we can really try and tease out the, the reasons behind all their, their doings and the yeah. Try and see if there's not something we can do about it. Try and pass a message down in more of a one-to-one -one conversation. And uh, God, uh, Be God speak first, to yeah. you, man. I hope I hope you find something fun again about this game if it if it gets fixed. Mm -hmm. I hope you don't hold a grudge against it. You know, the developers got to lock in criminally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, that was great. I love talking to that man. We're going to see if we can be the first people to majorly clickbait something about the devs and then actually have something positive said. <laughs> <laughs>